Welcome to Channel 18 News. I'm Jim Rogers. Traffic stop on Loop 301 at Rain Tree Circle Sunday afternoon by Hopkins County Sergeant Kelly Weiser discovered a passenger in the auto was wanted on warrants out of Lamar County. A Paris man, Rodarius Andoine Cooper, age 30, was wanted by the Paris Police Department for felony evading arrest attention with previous convictions and by the Lamar County Sheriff's Office for manufactured delivery control substance penalty group one, less than one Graham. Cooper is in Hopkins County Jail without bond on warrants. Corey Allen Duval Kenyon, age 19, of Sulphur Springs, was arrested at his residence on 9th Street when a Sulphur Springs police officer performed a pat down for weapons. The officer discovered a career a clear crystal-like substance believed to be methamphetamine along with a glass pipe commonly used for smoking methamphetamine and he also discovered a large amount of needles. Duval Kenyon was charged with possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1 less than 1 gram in a drug-free zone, a state jail felony. He's in Hopkins County Jail being held on a $10,000 bond. Skaters from across Texas with varying ages and skills were present for Skate Fest at Buford Park this weekend. There were nine bands in the lineup and several other activities. Even impending rain could not stop the fun. Uh, just getting the skaters, I mean, anybody that's competing, you know, we're going to get their bracelets on. And, uh, I mean, all we're doing right now is just getting, uh, getting prepared. With the rain, you know, I'm hoping we get a, a little bit better turnout. We're not really in any big hurry right now. Um, just got to kind of see how it goes. Rain, rain, go away, you know. Were you planning on doing this till 10 o'clock tonight? Yeah, yeah, it's going so, on all night for sure. So hopefully you, rain will break away. Yeah. I think uh, even after, after they kill the power, I think some of the bands are going to do some acoustic style stuff. So we'll be out here for a while. Jason Darden. And how are you associated with this event? Uh, I, I booked most of the bands. I, I used to skate the Warp Tour, so I know a lot about skating and stuff. So, you know, we, we've had, we sponsored a lot of kids. We sponsored kids on the Warp Tour before. We sponsored, we're going to sponsor a kid here today at the skate park here in Sulphur Springs. So. What yeah. made you decide to do this here? Honestly, uh, probably because we were able to get the park. Parks are hard to get, like to get you know, where you can have a show there and stuff and get a, get permission from the city to do it and everything. I mean, it's, it's hard to put it all, all, it's a lot of stuff involved in it, you know? And us being able to do that, that's probably the number one that while we're doing it here. I mean, not just that, but this town needs it too. <laughs> it needs to have this here. You have a skate park here and, and nothing is going on here, you know, really. so. Something needs to, you know, you need to have festivals and music here and stuff like that, you know. Hey, come down, far side, get you a pulled pork sandwich, five dollars in the water. Come on now. We're coming up with a breakfast menu at Fireside and Birthright. We're gonna have seven dollar tacos. You can have eggs, fried onions and mushrooms, brisket, pulled pork, smoked sausage, breakfast sausage. Spicy Red Links, y'all come out, give us a try. Coming soon. What time? 5.30 in the morning. What got you interested in skating to begin with? Oh, shoot. That was probably when I was a little kid. <laughs> Got my first little boogie board, my, my banana board, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a long time ago. <laughs> Like, I don't know. I just, I like skating. Tell me your name. I'm Ray Wood. My name is Damon. 
Tim McAnally. I'm Will. And collectively, you're known as? Yellow and Ted. 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 Where are you from? Fort Worth. What brought you here? Yeah. What brought us Skate here? Skateboarding. Skateboarding. Skating and punk. Skate rock. And the will to rush. As <laughs> always. Yeah. How long y'all been playing? Uh, as a band? Since uh -huh. November. Like, so, not even half a year. <laughs> yeah. half a year. Over half a year. We've been playing shows since feels January, like so long. it's half a year. It feels like longer, yeah. That's true. <laughs> For sure. Yep. Where besides skate festivals have you played? Uh, bars and houses and three links in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, best venue uh, play. Shed in someone's backyard. That was uh, really crazy. You guys I played a beer barn one, one time. Yeah, right? we played a beer barn. Yeah. Yeah. A beer barn? Yeah. Oh, the craft house. Oh yeah, they would craft house. Right. Yeah. Any living room you have. Any living any living store. room that yeah. you like want to you can piss your neighbors off. Like <laughs> right. Want to hold put in your wall? We can do that. We can oblige. <laughs> Which leads to my next question. What kind of label do you put on your music? Oh, uh, that's Doom Punk. Doom, Doom Punk. Doom Punk. I don't know. Punk rock. Something easy. <laughs> Escape to Ted, 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 Ted Punk. Ted Punk. We are Ted Punk. We're our own thing. <laughs> we're Ted. Because it's very interesting. But all in all, very much just punk. Good punk. All in all. With a little, a little splash of metal y sounding stuff in there. Yeah. Little, oh, right. Like a little blackened punk rock. Right. Well, black and punk Dixon. What's the name of your band? Never Cease. I played Where are you from? Same, same Dallas, road. Texas. How did you I end up here? I have no Jackson. earthly Hi. idea, but we love it. I wasn't the internet. I think it was Diamond Gems. <laughs> Actually, Jason was the one who got us here. Can't thank him enough for it. Are you <laughs> well, no, I'm exhausted. Are you happy? I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very tired. I'm ready for night night time. I've been here since 7 o'clock this morning. I have one more band to put up. And who will that be? Vanilla Sugar. Sure, all right. I'm Noah Johnson. I'm a visual specialist, visual strategist. All phases of production. We out here supporting my boy. He used to go to film school with David, super honky. So let's get it. Super honky all day. Are you satisfied? Yes, I'm satisfied. It turned out really good. Anything like what you expected? Yes, it was. I don't know. It was. It was awesome. I know that. It's been. It's not over. 
<laughs> well, now the sun's still up. Yeah, it's hot over. <laughs> Who you got coming up next? Vanilla sugar from Houston, Texas. We got vanilla sugar straight out of Houston, Texas. We're a duo with Vanessa and I, and we're ready to rock it out tonight. <laughs> Here's Don Julian with sports. At a state qualifier tournament in Rowlett Friday, the Wildcats 7-on-7 seven -seven football team came very close to qualifying for this weekend's state 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament. We get details from Wildcats football offensive coordinator Matt Young. It was a really good day. Uh, we just came up a little bit short. Started out in the morning uh, with a game against Tyler Lee, playing 6 day out of East Texas. It's like we had to drive an hour away from them for them to come up and play us. But uh, great game, started out slow. Uh, and actually all of our games we did, we were behind. The first three games, it was 20 to 12, 20 to 13, 20 to 14. We were behind each game. Uh, but kids kept fighting and kind of getting used to it and ended up tying it up in regulation right at the end and then won it in overtime. Uh, defense got a big stop. Uh, Bryce Queen had a big catch. Ramon Brian Amos had a big catch. Uh, those guys got some late scores. Austin Dobb was active. Uh, both Ryan Humphreys and Corey Young did a good job leading the offense. Defensively, Sebastian Adams broke on some balls and made some plays. Uh, Tyson Goodson was active for us. We had some guys that were coming for their first tournament, uh, just things they had been able to miss, or this was a chance they got to go, and really did a good job of stepping up. Uh, Cortavius Pruitt has hands all over the ball in that game. Uh, so we prevailed in that one. Great, get a break. And uh, turn around, we had Denison next. We knew that would be a tough one. They've kind of historically been a, a strong 7-on-7 seven seven team just because they do some things that are a little more geared toward that. And uh, it definitely was. Uh, again, Cortavius Pruitt had a couple picks in that one on conversions. Connor Bergen knocked down some balls. Um, offensively, uh, Brady Krause had a couple of nice catches in that one. Uh, we also saw uh, out of the backfield, Casey Goodson, Goodson starting to get involved. He had a bigger day as, as it kept going. And uh, just came up short, got stopped down in the red zone. Uh, both Humphreys and DeCorian were able to get some catches out of the backfield. Uh, but when we got down there in the red zone, we just weren't able to put it away. Came up 26-20 short. So we go to the deciding game, Richardson Pierce. Uh, we need Tyler Lee to get some help on the other end, but not score too many points. It was just like the week before. Uh, so the kids were a little bit down, uh, but Pierce kind of got us going early. It was one of those games kind of started jawing a little bit. So everybody's blood got pumped. We kind of quit worrying about qualifying and we're just going to beat these guys. And uh, big back and forth game. Uh, kids making plays. Landry Tyson had two huge, uh, two huge catches for us. Case and Goodson had one drive where he basically took us down the field out of the backfield. Uh, again, Ryan DeCorian were both sprinted out. I thought they did a good job with tempo and understanding where they were going. Uh, defensively, guys made plays. Kylan Wade, Hunter Smith, and those guys at linebacker, Case and Churchman were knocking balls down. And uh, we end up uh, prevailing in that one on the last play. Made a, actually got a PI on the last play of the game, got an extra down, and Austin Dodd caught a touchdown to win 34-32. Uh, Tyler Lee then beat Dennis on the other end, 18-12, and so we advanced out of pool play. 
A uh, really great day for our guys. Uh, East Texas was well represented. Texas High won their pool. Marshall won their pool. So three of our district won the eight pools that were over there. So it's kind of nice that East Texas goes to the Metroplex and gets after those guys. We kind of have a different brand that we play. So had a break and we played. Uh, I'm trying to get it right. I want to say like Sherry Land Parrington. Uh, I, I, it, I may be wrong with the name. Oh, Sherryland Pioneer. That's what it is. Anyway, down there in Mission, Texas, uh, they made a heck of a trip. And they were good. They executed offensively. Uh, we were behind 20-13. They got one late score right before half. They went 27-13. Uh, kind of hurt us a little bit there. Still some guys in that game uh, made some nice plays. Payson Edwards was getting some reps, not just in the secondary where he plays most of the time, uh, but at receiver. Uh, DJ Abram, did a, he, you could see in that game him starting to break on balls even better. Uh, Rio Becerra was active inside, uh, but we just weren't ever able to close the gap. Uh, we almost had a pick six. We had a pick, but weren't able to run it back uh, by Kylan Wade. And so just a lot of things on the edge and just weren't able to pull it out and just came up short and ended up losing the last one by a couple of touchdowns. So uh, it was a great tournament. It was great two weekends. Uh, there's something special about these guys. They played seven games. I think five of them came down to the last possession, if not six. Um, and that's just how they play, and they expect to win those, and they did. They won four of those. So really encouraged by how they play, the things they're doing. Uh, as coaches, you know, we hadn't coached them in over a month, so the details are starting to fade a little bit, but we can go back and do that in August. Uh, but just really uh, an excellent group that we're excited to see what they do down the road. Uh, from a plus factor, seven on seven's over. What did these guys get out of this, you think? Uh, I mean, you start with just their camaraderie. The, for example, the other day, by the time they finished the last game, it's probably about 120 degrees on the turf. <laughs> so when you're going through something like that with other people, all you can do is get closer. Um, the other side is they learn how to communicate because they're on their own. A lot of teams have dads coach or they have former players coach. We don't. We let our kids coach themselves. It makes them communicate. It makes them find answers. Uh, and so they learn that that's part of this, this game that we play, football, that out there between the lines, they've got to talk. they got to make the adjustments. they got to decide, hey, more of this, less of that. Uh, and the last thing is just the sheer number of reps. Uh, there's no telling how many balls that a Case and Goodson caught out of the backfield that we can't simulate being contested. Landry Tyson out at receiver, Simeon Taylor. Uh, the quarterbacks, the number of throws and reads on one of our concepts, 97. I mean, they got more in these last two weekends than they'll get the rest of the summer uh, by far. And so it's just invaluable as you roll into that, a confidence in a play, a confidence in a player. Uh, the little things they start to understand when a guy does this, I know he's about to go there and so I can make a throw. Uh, DB's the same way uh, from a coaching standpoint. Connor Bergen, there's no telling how many times he batted away a go route where people were trying to pick on him. Well, now he has confidence. Coaches have confidence. Right? When it's time for him to go play in the fall, he'll be ready to play. Uh, same thing with Cortavius Pruitt. These guys that uh, have played you know, in the spring kind of moved to new positions, but now we've got a bunch of confidence in knowing they can, the speed they can play, how they can play the ball, and they're understanding what's going on. So it's huge. I know they walk away with a bunch of confidence realizing they got out of pool play. We hadn't had a team do that in about four or five years. Um, they knew they were right on the cusp of qualifying, which we've only had one team do. So they realize the talent level they have and the ability and, and what may be ahead of them in the fall. The Wildcats' seven-on-seven -seven season ended for this year at that Rowlett tournament. The Wildcats' seven-on-seven -seven varsity ended up winning nine games and losing five this season. Lady Cats volleyball coach Justin Manus opened a three-day volleyball camp Monday in the main gym on the Sulphur Springs High School campus. During a morning camp for girls entering the fourth through the seventh grade, I talked with Coach Manus. I'm, I'm really impressed with the with the people we had come out. I think we had 30, 35 or so here. Uh, just excited to teach these girls a little bit of something about volleyball. You know, I was talking to them earlier. We want to keep it fun, uh, especially as young as they are. It's important that it's fun early. We want them to participate later on. Yeah, this is a young group. You've got an older group coming up later. Yes, I have an older group in the afternoon, and that'll be a little bit different camp. Sure. Uh, a lot of them already kind of know my system and stuff, so we'll be able to run it more like a, a practice. They look like they're having a good time today. It's, it's important for these young ones. Like I said, I want the participation in volleyball to really grow in Sulphur Springs, so it's important that they have fun early and see the fun part of volleyball versus all the running and all the hard drills that they have to do. I want them to have fun with it first. No, you're keeping a good eye on them, trying to see if there's a player or two you can find here. Oh, always, always. And I've already seen several here that, that look like future volleyball players here. But being this young, you can't ever tell. Here in a couple of years, 
they, they sprout, they grow real fast. Watching them serve while ago, uh, don't, a lot of them don't have it down yet, but it, you know they may have never served before. I've, some of them probably have never served a volleyball or served it correctly. So we're going to teach them the correct way to serve, and uh, just with repetitions over the next couple of days, hopefully they can leave with that in mind to be able to work on it on their own. Who's helping you out today? I have Coach Carrillo, Coach Hammock. I have my wife, Coach Manus, uh, and I have a uh, Coach Coach Bagwell. Uh, she's going to be interning for us this year, helping out a little bit. She's uh, from Commerce, so she's trying to get some hours in, so she's going to be helping us out. And then Coach Josh Neal from the Junior High. All right, best of luck with the camp, Coach. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. The afternoon camp is for girls entering the 8th or ninth grade this year, and volleyball camp continues through Wednesday. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening. Okay, you can go there. 